Hi, I'm Colin Barnes and I'd like to introduce you to the first in a series of videos on how to play the drum set. If you've just bought a drum kit or you're thinking about playing, you're one of the lucky ones because playing the drum set is one of the very rare musical instruments in that it's not long before you're playing with your friends in a musical situation at a far, far earlier stage than any other instrument. In fact, at the end of this video, you'll be able to turn around, providing you've done everything, and play with your friends. Over the years, we've learnt many styles and a lot of musical changes have occurred. So with that in mind, we're going to start you right from scratch and then slowly build up the kit. As I said, this is the first in a complete series and this first one's only designed to cover the very basics so we start you off with no bad habits at all. That's very important because you can regret it later on. So, here we go. The first drum I'm going to introduce you to is the snare drum. It is by far the most important drum in the drum kit. Generally they're made from three different forms. This one that I have here is made from metal, but you can also get them in wood and brass. Brass shells are generally brighter in tone and a lot louder, where wooden drums have a much more mellow tone. The reason they're called snare drums is because of the snare wires which run along the bottom of the drum. That gives a buzzing effect. I'll demonstrate that for you. We'll just place it on the snare drum stand. Snare drum st stands should be fairly solid in their construction with a special cradle underneath down here on the bottom so that it's, it's nice and solid with very little movement. Now that we've got the drum in position, I'll demonstrate a few of its sounds. When the snares are on, we get this sound. When the snares are off, we get this sound. That last sound is very much like a tom-tom, very, very popular in Latin effects. Another good Latin effect is what we call a cross stick or paler, produced with the stick across the drum. Now that we've touched on that, We'll introduce you to two other members of the drum kit. That's the bass drum and the hi-hat. The hi-hat should be a fairly stable construction, something that's not going to topple over on you while you're playing. It consists of the pedal and the hi-hat cymbals. Two cymbals, one mounted on top of the other. A good stand should have a spring adjuster a height adjuster and the bottom symbol should sit on a piece of foam underneath like so on what we call the hi-hat seat. The top symbol sits on the hi-hat clutch. Now I'll demonstrate some sounds for you. With the hi-hat closed and the foot pedal firmly flat on the footboard, you get a very chick type sound. With the hi-hat open, we get a very splashy sound. And depending on how much pressure we put on the footboard depends on how splashy a sound we get. When we bring the footboard down, we get what we call the chip. You'll notice when I put my foot down, the back of my foot rises. 
We call that heel towing. Now when we're playing a beat, it's a good way to stay in time and develop good feel. Now we'll move to the bass drum. We call a bass drum the heart of the drum set. It's the foundation and we lay down all the bottom end patterns with that. Now the bass drum should be a fairly solid construction, again like the hi-hat, and its spurs should be very stable. Now the spurs are what hold it all into place. And because you remember, the bass drum also holds the tom-toms later on, so it's got to be fairly solid. Now I'll just point show you the spurs. One on each side of the kit. Now when we control the tuning of the bass drum, that's done by what we call the tension rods. Some bass drums have eight on each side, others ten. Now the tension rods are these. They control the sound we get. Now, to provide the sound, we need a bass drum pedal. That's the main driving force. Now, they can vary in all sorts of shapes and sizes. The one I've got here is what we call a compression spring model. I'll take my foot off so you can get a good view. Now, the compression spring model means that the spring contracts. Now, the spring is in a little casing on the side here. Other pedals have the spring mounted on top or below, but they expand. Now, they're a more popular one and more readily available. Now, I'll demonstrate a few sounds that we get by playing the bass drum. Before we build the drum set any further, we'll get into some hand and feet techniques and then we'll complete the drum kit. Correct technique and good independence are the keys to getting a good start in drum playing. Firstly, we'll cover technique. It's very, very important to start this off right the first time. There are two grips to consider when you start playing. First, there's what we call the traditional grip, which you'll often see a lot of jazz players using, uh, a lot of military drummers playing, uh, and some, some rock drummers too that have been trained in more of the older styles. Now, when we talk traditional grip, we've got the right hand shown thus. Now it's very important that you've got a gap there and a good grip in what we call the fulcrum position, like that. So you can move your fingers without any problems and the stick's got plenty of movement. So the thing is not to grip in there too tightly, but then so that you can't get anything going but again, not too loosely, so that the stick goes everywhere. It's got to be a nice, comfortable grip, just in that little join there and the thumb. Then we bring the fingers down along the side, and they just rest there, and later on they'll control the bounce of the stick, because the key to good playing is letting the stick do most of the work for you. All you do is control the bounce. Now, the other important thing to make sure that you do you have the palm of your hand facing down. That's very important. Make sure that the palm is down rather than on the side or like that. You do see some players who play like that with the thumb on top. If it works for you, fine. But you find most players will use the palm down. That's very important. So you're getting a nice, clean stroke. Like that. Now you can see I'm getting very little movement from my elbow. Most of it's all from my wrist. 
Now with good playing, the wrist and the fingers are very, very important. They're your main driving force. We'll come back to that grip a little bit later. Now we'll show you the traditional grip on the left hand. Now with the left hand, it's a little bit different. We've got the stick sliding through the middle of your hand. I'll give you an idea, I'll take the stick out like that. Okay, so two fingers on top, two fingers on the bottom, like that. It's another angle. Then the stick just slides in like that. Now, we curl the top two fingers over the top, and that's the grip. So that's more that side of wrist action, a little bit different again. And your main control on that comes from your first finger and the join there. So it's whatever you feel comfortable with there. Now with the matched grip, both hands are the same. Thus. So again, same with the left hand as we showed you with the right earlier on. You've got the palm down. You've got fingers running down the side. The stick nicely positioned in that fulcrum, we call it, in there. And it's all from the wrists. The other important thing with your technique is to make sure that when you're playing, you've got your shoulders sitting back comfortably, elbows comfortably dropped, not tucked in tight, not out here, but just nice and comfortable, so you're in a good, steady playing position. And the drumsticks should have a nice V-type shape on the snare drum. That's also important. A good thing for accurate playing, just to practice, it's not essential, but it's a good thing for accuracy, is to pretend there's a 20 piece in the centre of your drum and you've got to try and hit that 20 cent piece all the time. That way you'll also be hitting in the, the same area of your snare drum all the time so the sound is going to be very similar rather than hitting odd areas of the drum at different times which are going to sound different. Now, when we've got our grips organised, we'll show you some strokes. Now, I'm going to show you mostly the matched grip because that's the most popular one used these days. But the best advice I can give you is to see a good teacher and see which one works best for you. Now, with the match grip, we've got what we call three levels of attack on the snare drum. We've got what we call tap strokes. I'll just demonstrate those. Then we have what we call half strokes. I'll demonstrate those. And what we call full strokes. Now, full strokes are the main thing we use in loud, dynamic playing. Now, that's...